おはようございます。私はカタリンです。I am so happy to have you with me here today and welcome to part two of our Snowy Escape unboxing. Today we are doing our、uh, build by, our lots, our pre made rooms,、um, and I am super stoked to go through all of this with you guys. This samba, huh? So. Before we get started, if you haven't seen our unboxing for our cast, go ahead and hop over there and take a look at what we did. I don't know why I'm pointing. I don't know if their video is going to be there. It probably won't be. Go ahead and take a look at what we did over there. We built this really cute, like, brother sister combo. I don't know if we're going to play with them or not, but who knows? I bet it's going to be fun.、Um, what I want to do, though, is start just diving right in and taking a look at the pre made rooms that we got. So, I want to start with the Kotatsu sitting room.、Uh, the Kotatsu is the table that's really close down to the ground, and typically you're going to eat at it by being at one of the pillows and sitting on your knees.、Um, this can be really difficult, especially if you're a little bit older. And so, I saw this really cool、um, building thing that I want to try like,、uh, in, in a game where they actually just went ahead. And what they did was they sort of dug a little bit of a hole into the flooring so that instead of having to be like on the floor and have a hot kotatsu mat, which you can actually upgrade these to be warm,、um, you could just sit on the edge here and engage in、um, the kotatsu that way. And, and to have this, this heated floor. Uh, which is,、uh, according to the builder that I was watching while they were doing this home tour, is better for grandma, you know, and better for her knees and her back and whatever. And I just thought that was super cute and thoughtful and wonderful.、Um, before we move on, I do also want to talk about these tatami mats.、Uh, tatami mat is a type of flooring that you'll find in a Japanese home that is often、um, heavily compacted straw that's then been more or less tied up. And tatami mats are great for a lot of things, partly because they're noise canceling, partly because they have a little bit of give to them when you walk barefoot, so it's, it's not as bad on your balance and your structure.、Um, but they've got some downsides as well, including the fact that they can be harmed really easily. It's super easy to damage a tatami mat.、Um, so uh, I was actually doing some research on this, and what I had found was that.、Um, There's this company that makes,、um, ooh, that's really pretty. It's really big. That's really pretty. This company that makes Cypress tatami mats,、uh, which are far more durable, and it's reusing some of the、um, discarded Cypress from other、uh, industries that are being used. And I don't remember exactly what they are.、Um, I think it was some logging or something. I'm not sure. Yamachan! That is so cute. I wonder actually if I can put up that and where is the mountain? Yeah! Oh, I can't really move. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, now put the Yamachan one on top. Yay! Yamachan's on the mountain! Well, it clips kind of bad, so maybe not. Anyways, so that's the Kotatsu sitting room.、Um, So that's pretty cool. Let's move on here to the kitchen area. And one of the things that should really be obvious really early on is all of the wood tones. And firstly, let me also state for the record, I adore that all of our swatches now match. Like, we got so much new furniture and it's all in different wood tones. And I am just stoked because finally I get something where all of our wood tones basically match and it's great. I adore this.、Um, oh, look, a bar! Because we have bars in every single pack. Love it. Love it so much.、Um, so, as I was saying,、uh, you'll see a lot of wood accents, and that's really common in Japanese architecture because it's a lot about bringing the outside in and having a sort of seamless transition between your living space and raw nature. Um, so, that's a big part of the culture, and it, we'll get into it a little bit when we talk about a n g a w a s when I'm doing my speed build on a、um, machia.、Uh, machia is like a Japanese townhouse 
but it's got some really unique features in it. One of the things that's really, uh, that's customary with the Machia is that you do not use nails to build them. So um, it's an entirely wood structure built largely from just connecting that wood together or um, finding other ways of binding it, but there's, there's no metal involved in that at all. So wood items are very, very common. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to talk a little bit about here was these cupboards and not cupboards, but whatever um, and just that you can put stuff on the cabinets and I love that so much. Now before we move on, I do also want to talk a little bit about um, ovens because ovens in Japan are a little bit different than what we see over in the West. Um, one of the key features to a Japanese oven is this part right here, right at the very top. That's a fish grill and it, almost every oven in Japan that you're going to see is going to include that. And you just put in the fish and you usually put in some water and you let it go. It's super uncommon for Japanese kitchens, especially um, like ones designed for lower income individuals to have a full size oven because there's not a lot of things in Japanese culture that get baked in the same way that we might think of over here in the West. So ovens really aren't terribly useful in that, in that regard. We're gonna move on here to the bathhouse um, or spa or whatever. I love this so much. I think it's so serene and so beautiful. The curtains are wonderful, but that's not my favorite part of this pre-built room. My favorite part of this pre-built room is actually the kitty cats. These little buggers are so stinking cute. So um, cat in Japanese is Neko and they are just absolutely adorable. You would be kidding yourself if you thought for a moment I wasn't absolutely going to be including um, these little kitty cat wallpapers in, in future builds that I do because I absolutely will be. Um, I was actually reading uh, that um, a, a cuteness helps your brain to focus because what it's doing is it just triggers a huge shot of dopamine into your brain and that this was actually an evolutionary effect that was built into us because of our need to protect our young because our young are cute and adorable simply put okay i'm moving on to this bedroom here and i've got um these really cool skis designs up here that i just think are are absolutely awesome um, we see the little Yamachan stickers that we saw before. All in all, it's a cute room. I wouldn't say there's anything particularly special about it, um, but with this bed, one of the things that I really like is that it comes in a lot of different options. So on top of having this like super colorful, super girly option, there's a lot of very plain, oh, void critters. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of very plain ones as well, which I realize I'm going through big displays. There's a plain one. So you have a lot of options on how creative you want to be with this, which is great because frankly, all of the beds need more swatches. You should be able to flip the bedding, I think almost as a separate feature from the bed itself if it were up to me. Um, now the adult bed doesn't have the cute one, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I still think, and I love, I love the designs here and I love the cutouts on the headboard and like, it's just, it's so good. It's so good. I love all of it. Okay. So, um, Ooh, bamboo blinds. That's cool. So we've talked a little bit about some of the pre-made lots. What I'd like to do is um, take a look at the landscaping trees as well. So we have a Japanese maple tree and a Japanese pine tree, which are both kind of gorgeous. But we didn't really get any other plants, which is kind of unfortunate because there's just, there's so much floral and fauna that I hate to see get lost. You know, I hate it to see if we focus too much on that surface level, not getting deep enough to really appreciate the culture on which this is based. Maybe I'm cuckoo, I don't know, but that's just kind of 
I don't know, I think it would be a shame if we have something like this and we don't really take full advantage to learn from it. Oh, yeah, I love all of this so much. Um, let's see, what else do we not have? Oh, we've got some of these really cute ones. Ooh, let's look and see what other kinds there are. Oh, oh that's so beautiful. Okay, when I make Catherine's Kulmarebi house, I swear to goodness, it's gonna be gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I am so stoked about a lot of this. Oh, yes please. Yes please. I am really glad that we have just so much stuff where all of the swatches finally matches. Like, I could have an entire house set up and everything is just gonna go together. And honestly, like, is there really, as a builder, is there really anything more beautiful than that? Like, it's all good. Oh, this is cool. So, Japanese baths, um, firstly, are extremely technologically advanced in some of these newer homes. Like, the things you can do on the control panels are stunning. Um, but Japanese people tend to, well, tend to have baths with the whole family. So they have um, like bathroom shower combination rooms and then usually another room that will have the sink and the washer dryer. And usually the toilet is on its own room. And especially in the newer Japanese homes that you're gonna see, the toilets are particularly advanced. Toilet though. Um, they're particularly advanced in that um, they're gonna have a bidet, they're gonna have some other features with them. And I don't know if these automatically have the bidet with them or if you have to install it. Install the bidet and wash your troubles away. Yeah, so you're gonna have to install that when you get it, which, oh well, that's kind of unfortunate, but who cares. I love having tents. And I love having tents because I love playing rags to riches. <laughs> <laughs> and so like it feels kind of like, oh goody, I don't have to buy a house if I do this. It's Yamachan! Oh, he looks all graffitied. How cute is that though? Oh, and it's in gold. I love it. I'm also kind of excited. I don't know what I'm going to use this for, but this is a thing where like I would shrink this down and use this as art somewhere. Um, actually, I wonder if I can get even smaller. No, that's as small as it gets. So it's a little bit bigger than a toilet. Um, and so origami is a big thing in Japan, in case you can't tell by the name. And um, when a friend is sick, oftentimes you will make an origami crane. And um, you're supposed to make, I think it's a hundred cranes. It might be a thousand, I don't remember. In order to help your friends get well from, from like sickness or whatnot. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of the items, which are just awesome. Um, and I'm super excited for a lot of what we have, like, just available to us in general. Um, I wanted to point out, we've got a new science table, which is really cool. New craft table. We've also got, like, new skis and stuff, so we're definitely going to be playing with that when we have... Um, like Catherine and, and we're doing stuff with her. Vending machines. I'm looking for something specific actually. Which I don't think it's there. I think it's in here. Hey, it's the gondola. Gondola, tram, train car, whatever. I've heard a lot of people call it a lot of different things. Um, and there's a lot of things you can call it, but oh well. Okay, so. I want to show you a convenience store because I thought this was really cool. So in Japanese, um, there are multiple different writing systems just sort of depending on the origin of the word. Um, so typically words that are not native to Japanese, as in they were words that were ported over from another language, are going to be written in what's called katakana. And it's very, very common with katakana to take those words and shorten them down to four characters, especially longer words. So something like McDonald's, which is a Western word that's been adapted into Japanese, so makudonado, well, that's kind of long. So they shorten it down to just four characters, makudono, um, in order to sort of make it easier. This is a convenience store. 
and that's another word that gets ported over. And so the shorthand for a convenience store is combini. That's another one of those, like it's got four words in it. So um, store is, is a uh, little convenience store is a combini. This is a uh, machia. We talked about it a little bit earlier. This is basically what I'm gonna try and be building kind of with a couple of differences. Um, machia, like I mentioned before, are Japanese townhouses. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about those and the history behind them once we do our speed build on that. So I do uh, go ahead and make sure you're hitting the notifications bar below so that way when we do our Machia, you'll be able to see that firsthand. The other thing I really wanted to point out was the train station because trains are so common in Japan. It is very rare for a family to have more than one vehicle. And even then, most of the time, you're gonna be using your vehicle to go down to the train station. And the train station is an eki. Um, and the symbol for the train station, one of the pieces to that kanji is actually a horse, which talks a little bit about the history of what that is. It's for transportation. And, and, you know, I know I'm kind of nerding out here over the Japanese language, but like, it's so cool. There's so much about it that's just, it's so, it's so worth it to discover another part of, of the world. It's really nice to see the little bit that I do know reflected in these packs to show that there was a lot of care taken in, in understanding at the very least what is common, what is, is a part of that culture. How do you blend both the modern with the ancient? What does that even look like? So this is just coming from a silly little otaku who maybe doesn't know anything, but I'm really happy with all of this. I'm super impressed with all of this and and I hope that the whole lot of you guys are too because frankly like I'm just I'm just so in love with all of it. All right. Uh, if you would be so kind, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, notifications if you want to see what's coming up next. Like I said, the Machia build, the Catherine Let's Play that we're going to do with her. Um, also, I have another series going that is my uh, 100 Baby Vampire Challenge. Um, so that is also um, on my channel with a playlist for that. And uh, yeah, I am stoked for this. I am so excited to get to work on, on my next couple of builds and share them with you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.